Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over references in C++. So in the previous videos, we went over pointers in C++ and basically a pointer points to a memory address. So here you can see we have a savings pointer, which points to the memory address of this savings integer with the value 10,000. And because we are pointing directly to the memory address where this value is stored, we can make changes to that value. And to make changes to the value, we first have to dereference the pointer. That way we get the value at the memory address. So here you can see I'm dereferencing savings pointer and then I'm adding 2000 to this value. So this is going to add 2000 to savings. So if I save and run the program, you can see when I print savings and a value stored in the memory address for savings pointer, we have 12,000. So that's a quick recap of how pointers work. With a pointer, you can directly reference the memory address, but in C++, we have something called references, which are similar to pointers. So to create a reference, we would do int ampersand, and then let's create a name for this reference. So I will call it savings ref and I'm going to assign it to savings. And just like with pointers, there is a naming convention. So you can say R savings. So the R stands for reference. You can also do ref savings or savings underscore ref or savings ref. It's up to you. So I'm going to use savings ref. And unlike with variables, if I have a variable, for instance, int savings two, and I assign it to savings, this is going to create a copy of the value 10,000 and assign it to a new variable. But with a reference, we are not creating a copy of the value. Instead, we are having a reference to this same variable. So this savings ref is going to reference the same 10,000. So it's similar to a pointer, except we don't have to use all these extra syntax. So we do not have to dereference. Instead, we can just go ahead and write savings ref plus equal 2000. And if I want to print out the value, I can just go directly with savings ref. So unlike with a pointer, I do not need to point to a memory address, nor do I need to dereference when I access the value. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get 14,000 for the three print statements. And that is because the first time we are adding 2000 using the pointer, and then we are adding another 2000 using the reference. Now you might be thinking, what are the differences between a reference and pointer? If they pretty much point to the same memory location, a reference doesn't need all this extra syntax. So why use a pointer? Well, the thing is, with a reference, once you assign a reference a value, you cannot change it. So let's say I have another savings account and I name it savings2 and it has $50,000. With a pointer, I can reassign it to the memory address of savings2. So if I save and run the program here, you can see savings has 12,000. And then when we dereference the savings pointer, we get 52,000 and the reference has 12,000. So with a pointer, we can change the memory address that we're pointing to. With a reference, we cannot change the value that we point to. So here we have savings reference and it is pointing to savings. If I try to do what I did with a pointer and have savings ref point to savings two, let's see what happens. So I'm going to save and run the program. And you can see we get 52,000 for all three. So what happened here? So at first we have pointer pointing to savings, which is 10,000. And then we dereference the pointer and add 2,000. So we add 2,000 to this savings value. So savings will have 12,000. And then we create a reference for savings and we try to change the value being referenced. But actually what happens is reference is savings. So in short, what we're doing is savings equal savings two. So savings two has the value 50,000. So now savings is going to have the value 50,000. And this is going to be a copy. So with that 50,000, we add 2,000. Therefore, when we print out savings, 
we get 52,000. And when we dereference savings pointer, which points to the memory address of savings, we also get 52,000. And the same for the reference. So remember, once you declare a reference and assign it to a value, you cannot change what you're referencing. So a reference kind of acts like a const pointer. So you cannot change a pointer if you declare it as const. And with a reference, you cannot change what you're referencing. All right, now let's go over another example. So here we have a vector of strings, courses, and we have a list of courses. So we have chemistry, physics, and calculus. And we have a pointer to a vector of strings. So this is a courses pointer and we are pointing to the memory address location of courses. And through this pointer, we are adding another course, French. So when we print out the vector through courses and through the courses pointer, we expect the value French to appear in both of these for loops. So if I save and run the program, and as you can see, we have French appearing in both lines. So just like with the integer example I showed you earlier, we can also create a reference to a vector of strings and to do so, I would just type vector string ampersand courses ref, and I can assign it directly to courses. So just like with the pointer, I now have a reference to the courses vector. And unlike with the pointer, I do not need to use the arrow operator. I do not need to dereference. Instead, I can just go ahead and type courses ref dot pushback. And let's add another course, biology. And I can also print out the value. So let's write a for loop to iterate through the courses using the reference. So I can do for size t, i is equal to zero, i is less than courses ref dot size. So again, I do not need to dereference or use the arrow operator. And then I can see out courses ref of i. And then let's see out end line here. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we have biology added to the vector and all three lines print the same values. And of course, I cannot reassign a reference. So if I had courses two with psychology and Spanish, and I tried to do courses ref is equal to courses two, and I save and run the program, let's see what happens. And you can see we have psychology, Spanish, French, and biology. And that is because at this point, when we change courses ref and assign it courses two, what we're actually doing is courses equal courses two. So we are taking the value that we are referencing, which is courses, and we are assigning it to courses two. Okay? All right. And finally, I also want to mention when we should use references. And in one of my previous videos, I talked about the for each loop, otherwise known as the range space for loop. And basically, you can iterate through the vector by typing string course courses. And then you can just see out course like so. And let's see out end line here. So basically, with a for each loop, Instead of iterating through the vector by index, we are iterating through the vector by each value. And so if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same thing. Now, one thing to note here is the way the range based for loop works is we are basically assigning course to each value in courses. So it's going to do courses of index zero and then courses of index one and then two and so on. And as you've learned, earlier with variables, we always make a copy. And this can get expensive if you have a lot of characters in your string. So if you had a thousand characters, you would be creating another copy of the string with a thousand characters. And that is unnecessary when you can just use a reference. And with a reference, instead of making a copy, we are just going to directly reference the memory address of each individual index in the vector. And another thing to note here is that since we are just printing out the value course, and we're not making any changes, we can declare this as const. So this is known as a const reference, which may confuse you because you might think that 
why are we doing const reference when a reference is already const by nature? But actually, just like with pointers, we have to read this backwards. So course is a reference to a string that is const, okay? So this is referred to as const reference, but in reality, it's not the reference that is const, but rather the value that we are assigning to the reference that is const, okay? So it is the string that is const, not the reference, but still we just call it const reference. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you understand how references work and when to use references and what are the differences between a pointer and a reference. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.